Hello everybody, it's Jackie here again, back with some more card reviewing. So, this is my second video, and we're just going to be kind of talking about my first opinions on some more of the cards. Um, we've got some really, uh, some really exciting stuff. Um, last video I finished off on Zentimo, so we're going to get straight stuck in with my boy Waterboy. It's a 2 mana 2 1 neutral rare. Battle Cry, your next hero power, power this turn costs zero. Um, so, this isn't particularly exciting. Life Tap is probably the most powerful hero power, so like using this with Life Tap, is that really worth it? You're basically just getting a free 2-1 minion. I don't really think it's worth it. Um, there's some new mage things, which, which encourage you to use hero powers. Um, you're never going to want to use this in an even deck, because you're literally reducing your, your hero power from 1 cost to 0, so... You never want to play in an even deck. But yeah, some of the mage things we're going to be talking about in a minute where you might want to use some hero powers, but I don't think... I just don't think this card will see any play, to be perfectly honest. Okay, now for the exciting stuff. Gianlai the Dragonhawk, 7 mana 4-4 four, four, mage legendary. This card is really exciting. It's a beast. Not that that really makes much of a difference, but... Battlecry, if your hero power dealt 8 damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. <clears throat> Rag has obviously been... Uh, into the Hall of Fame, and so it's no longer seen anywhere. Feels bad, man. Other than wild. And this is a way we can bring him back, uh, which is really exciting. It's seven mana as well, so you get able to get Ragnaros for one mana cheaper, plus you're getting a 4-4 four, four as well. The downside is obviously you have to have dealt eight damage with your hero power already this game. Like, in a control mage, you're kind of using your hero power a lot, but you're only doing one damage to things, so it would take a long time to actually get this going like maybe you would want to play this anyway in in just a normal control mage because you're probably going to use eight, eight hero powers over the course of the game and it's, it's a powerful late game card but more likely this this could potentially see playing something like odd mage where your hero power does uh two damage you literally only need to hero power four times and and you can get rag and you're going to be hero powering quite a lot in in odd mage we've also already seen the let me go find him where is he at we've already seen paramaniac um, whenever your hero power kills a minion, draw a card. This is something else you'd play in Odd Mage, which is encouraging you want to use your hero power. So yeah, Odd Mage. Who knows? Maybe Odd Mage could uh, could see some play. I'm definitely excited to play this card. You don't you don't actually have to play Odd Mage as well. We have a couple of other cards. These two, to be particular, we have the uh, Spirit of the Dragon Hawk, uh, the Mage Spirit. It's a two mana zero three stealth for one turn. Your hero power also targets adjacent minions. So obviously you can't play this in an Odd Mage. However, it is allowing your hero power to do more damage. Like, you're doing three damage for one hero power, uh, like providing there are, you're hitting three minions at once. But this card has really good synergy with Daring Fire Eater. One mana, one, one. Battle Cry, your next hero power this turn deals two, two more damage. So, you can play your Spirit of the Dragonhawk on turn two. Just chill. Um, and then the turn after, play your Daring Fire Eater um, and use your hero power with this, hopefully, probably, already on the board, because uh, it's got stealth. And you're essentially doing three damage to three minions. So against aggressive decks, this could actually be really nice. Like what we could even potentially see is like control mage decks going for a... Like at the moment, like control mage or big spell mage or whatever you want to pl call it. Plays like Keliseth and like Stonehold Defender or Sarah Knight, things like that. Like just early game minions. We could potentially try this out in like a, a big spell mage, but the early game is more based around using a hero power uh, because we can use it as like removal. Uh, with these new cards, and also it buffs up the big dragon hawk. So yeah, these three together, really exciting. We maybe would see this on its. We could maybe we'll try this on its own anyway. But um, the the early game hero pass stuff is is pretty nice. Obviously, this you can play an odd mage as well. Like daring fairy, you can play an odd mage. Not sure if you'd want to or not, but I quite like uh, the theme of these three. This is definitely going to be one of the first cards I play. Okay. Next card is Shriek, a 1-mana Warlock rare spell. Discard your lowest cost card, deal 2 damage to all minions. So, Discard Warlock has always just been terrible, mainly because, like, the benefit of... Like, when you complete the Warlock quest, the, the benefit just isn't enough. Like, the, the 3-2s you summon every turn, it just really doesn't do enough. Um, but this card is just good on its own. Like, 1-mana deal 2 damage to all minions is an amazing AoE. Like, obviously in Warlock you've already got good stuff. You've already got Defile, which is nuts. You've got Hellfire, which is fantastic. But this is great as well. Like, Warlock is just very quickly turning into the best class for AoE, really. Um, you've obviously got, like, Twisted Nether. You've got Godfrey is insane. So, Warlock is just a fantastic class for, for AoEs, and this is just another good one. And discarding your lowest, lowest cost card is actually not that bad. Like, one of the 
worst things about discard in like a control warlock deck like obviously you're not going to be playing this as an aggressive deck you don't want to deal two damage to everything when you've got the board um you want to be clearing your opponent's board so you'll play this in a control deck and discarding your lowest co cost card is not that bad like you don't have to risk discarding things like the death knight or void lord or skull of Minari or any of these really crucial key cards because that well you can make sure they're not you can make sure they're not the lowest card in your hand and you can instead make sure you discard something like uh mortal coil or cobalt librarian doomsayer like these type of things like that you might need but you're very happy to discard to get a two damage aoe against a lot of aggressive decks so this card is seems really good to me and also has synergy with high priestess jeklik uh four mana three four legendary taunt lifesteal when you discard this add two copies of it to your hand so this is, I'm really excited about this card, actually, because discard, there's a lot of discard things you can do in Warlock. Um, like, this, you're not, there's not really any current decks that you would really play this in, but we could maybe make a deck that kind of makes it work. Because um, when you discard it, you add two copies to your hand, which means that next time you discard, you're even more likely to discard it again, because you've got more of them in your hand. And you can just keep getting the, this card over and over again. Obviously, you've got Taunt and Lifesteal as well, so it's really defensive. Um... Like, I'm really excited to play a, a discard Warlock. Like, not necessarily with the quest, just because I don't think the quest is very good. But getting this just over and over again, using powerful cards. Like, obviously, you can play things like uh, Doom Guard and... What's that Formula 3-8 taunt called? Um, Lucari Halfiend or something? Okay, well, whatever it's called. The 3-8 taunt that discards two cards. Like, this could potentially be really good with this as well. Um, so, yeah, I like it. And then... Also, with the discard synergies, uh, Reckless Diatrol. Three mana, two sex, common taunt. Battle cry, discard your lowest cost card again. So, three mana, two six is obviously fantastic stats um, for the mana cost. Once again, like I said about discarding your lowest, lowest cost card, like, it, you can kind of work it in your favor. Um, a lot of the time as well, we have Clutch Mother Zavas is still in standard. So, you could potentially make Zavas your lowest cost card. It's only two mana. Um... It's pretty easy to get one mana cards out of your hand. And you, if you discard to fat Zavas, then that's fantastic. Like, you get your three mana, two, six taunt, and you're discarding something you actually want to discard. Like, that's absolutely, actually nuts. So, yeah, potentially really good. Obviously, a lot of the time, like, with these discard your lowest cost card things, like, you're going to want to discard Jek. Like, this is... But it's going to be kind of hard to make a four mana cost card the lowest cost in your hand, you know what I mean? So that's one thing that could be a bit, you know, dodgy about it. Anyway, next we have Soul Warden. More discard synergy, Bogchamp. Six mana, six, six, epic. Battle cry, add three random cards you discarded this game to your hand. So it's not just minions, it's cards. Like, <clears throat> this is so insane because you can, like, you can play, God, I really want to remember that card's name. Seven mana, four mana, three, eight, taunt, fell fiend, Lakari, Lakari, hell fiend, Lakari, fell fiend. Okay, let's forget about that. <laughs> but anyway, this can allow you to play cards like that. Um, and Doom Guard more kind of freely because you're not so worried about discarding. Like, even if you discard your Death Knight, you're like, oh, okay, I've got my Soul Warden. I'll just get my Death Knight back. So you can just play these really overpowered discard cards and then have this in the late game to just get you the value back that you lost. Um, it, 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 it's good, man. It's good. I mean, the, the, the thing is that, like, Warlock already has very powerful decks, right? You've got Zoo, you have Even Warlock, you have Cube Lock. Um, you have, like, Control Warlock, even Mechathun Warlock. It's like, is Discard Warlock going to be good enough to compete with all these other Warlock uh, decks? Because Warlock is one of the strongest classes right now. Not quite sure, but these Discard cards are pretty powerful, so there's definitely a chance. Um, okay, Smolderthorn Lancer, 3 mana, 3, 2, Warrior Epic. Battle Cry, if you're holding a dragon, destroy a damaged enemy minion. Now, in general, I don't really like Warrior. Like, in general, I just never really play much Warrior. I don't really know why. It's just not really been the class for me. But this is a powerful card. Uh, it's like an Execute with a body attached. Only if you have a dragon in your hand, obviously, though. So you're going to want to be playing a dragon deck, or at least some kind of dragons in there. Yeah. I, I feel like you're not maybe... You're maybe not going to want to play this in an odd Warrior, though. I mean, you could. But it's like, if you're playing an odd deck, on, on turn two, you're probably going to be hero-powering. It's like, it's harder to activate... Um, it's harder to damage things. In, in Odd Warrior, I feel. Like, if you're playing, like, a, a warrior that plays even cards as well, just like a Control Dragon Warrior, you can play things like Blood Razor and Slam, um, and these even cards that can help, like, activate Execute. So I'd definitely be interested to try a warrior deck, a Dragon Warrior deck that's kind of, like, not odd, um, not even or anything like that, just kind of a, just a kind of control -y Dragon Warrior deck. But this card's good. Like, what it does is obviously good. It's just, like, is Dragon Warrior going to be good enough, I guess. <clears throat> Raiding Pie. 
a three mana uh, rogue spell, draw two pirates from your deck, combo add a weapon. So you're always drawing two cards as long as you're playing a pirate deck. Obviously you're only really gonna play this in a pirate deck or some deck that has some kind of pirates in it. But drawing three, two cards for three mana is good. Uh, like think of arcane intellect, but you have the potential to get a weapon as well, which makes this really good. Also in rogue, you have prep. So you can potentially prep raiding party and add three more, add two pirates and a weapon to your hand, which is, is really fantastic. This card is just really good, as long as you're playing pirates. <laughs> yeah, gotta, gotta emphasize that. Like, it doesn't just draw cards in general. You have to be playing pirates in your deck. So, yeah. Will Pirate Warrior be a thing? Can't really say. There is quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of new stuff for a Pirate Rogue deck, so I think it's very possible the Pirate Rogue could be a, a, a big thing. And this card could definitely help with that. Okay, Grief Horror. It's a 12 mana priest, 7 8 taunt. Costs one less for each spell you've cast this game. It's a rare. Now, I Dragon Soul Priest is like one of my favorite meme decks of all time. And this would like fit so perfectly in that deck. Like you just pay all these cheap spells, you get your Dragon Soul going, you do stuff with Lyra and Radiant Elementals. Um, and it should be fairly easy to get this really cheap. Obviously it's defensive as well. Uh, the fact it has Torn is really nice. It's not just like Arcane Giant where it's just an 8-8. Like this is also going to protect your face. So this is a good card. Like it's like a giant that's like specifically for Priest and it has Torn. That sounds good to me. I mean, I don't think you'd play it in, like, the current Priest decks that are on ladder, like the kind of uh, Malagos Velen type stuff. That does have a few spells, but I, I don't think you'd put this in it. So, yeah, maybe a more miracle type Priest that is more focused on spells could definitely fit this in. Now, this is actually, this card is, like, this is actually one of the cards I'm most excited about. Even though it's not, it doesn't look particularly insane. Uh, it's a 3 mana 3 4 epic neutral, untamed Beastmaster. Whenever you draw a beast, give it plus 2, plus 2. 3 minute 3 4, fair stats with a really good effect. Obviously, you're going to be one of playing lots of beasts uh, if you're playing this this card. So, kind of Hunter springs to mind. Um, Drew, I mean, Druid kind of has beasts, but not really anymore. The kind of beast Druid thing is kind of gone. So, Hunter is, you know, the one class that springs to mind when, when you, you see this card. And it's one of those cards where Hunter doesn't have very good card draw. So, it's hard to kind of like play this and get a load of draw and then kind of buff all these beasts. But. It's a card that if you're playing a lot of beasts in your deck, you play this, and your opponent's really going to want to kill it straight away, because if they don't, they know that they can just get really punished by uh, the constant plus two, plus two effect on everything you draw. Uh, or every beast, anyway. Quest Hunter is, is, is something where this could work, because you can use it with uh, the raptors. Uh, you keep drawing, you play this, you play a raptor, you draw another raptor, it gets buffed plus two, plus two, you draw another one and keep going. So that's the type of situation where it could be really crazy. But maybe just a beast hunter in general. Maybe just some kind of mid-rangey beast hunter. This is going to be really fun to try out. Spirit of the Tiger. <clears throat> this is the Paladin Spirit. It's a rare. Stealth for one turn. After you cast a spell, summon a tiger with stats equal to its cost. Now, this is another card that's kind of encouraging the type of spell buff based priest. Like kind of quest priest type of thing. So you can play this. And then the turn after, maybe like coin out a uh, Spite Ridge Deed. And you get a 6-6. Six, six plus the 1-1 one, one from the coin. You could Blessing of Kings and get 4-4. Four, four. And one thing about using things like Spite Witch Steed is that the Steed could like... I feel like Steed is going to be one of the cards you're going to most want to play with this. You can also do Call to Arms into Steed. Um, and I was talking uh, on the last video about... Where is he gone? Immortal Prelate. How you can buff him. Pull him out with Call to Arms and he still has the buff. So some type of deck with like Immortal Prelate. Lots of buffs. You play Spirit of the Tiger. You call to arms your stuff back out, and then you steed the turn after. That type of stuff could be really ex exciting, because it can give the kind of quest rogue type deck more tempo. Uh, and more aggression, really. It is expensive, obviously 4 mana. Like, you're essentially doing 4 mana, not really that much at the start. It's that kind of the turn after when you're kind of making up for it. Uh, but yeah, coining steed, or like call to arms, I think are going to be good uh, good follow-ups to this. Like whether that type of deck is going to be good, I don't know. I mean, we could even just play, it doesn't have to be a quest paladin deck. We could maybe just play like a mid-range buff, mid-range buff paladin or something that plays Lanessa. But I like it. Gral the Shark. A 5 mana 2-2 two, two beast, battle cry, eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Death Rattle, add it to your hand. So, this card is just, it's a legendary. It kind of reminds me of a Zerdrake, where you're playing a minion and you're playing a 5 drop and you're drawing a card. It's kind of what this does. Obviously, it's not really like that because it can be silenced, which is downside. Secondly, you don't know what minion you're going to get. Um, like, it's, it's going to be eating a, a minion. You don't get to choose the minion. Otherwise, you could just put the darkness in and just get a 5 mana 20, 20, 22, 22 every single game. Um, 
I mean, obviously you can do that. It's going to be kind of fun to try out Grell with the darkness and try and play a five drop and eat the dark, eat the darkness, which you might be able to do a fair amount of the time, which could be crazy, by the way. Um, but I think generally this could fit into a variety of um, rogue decks, maybe some miracle type decks where you play things like Auctioneer and Feldori Strider, and Grell just becomes like a five mana six six that draws you a card because when it dies, you get the get the card in your hand. I think this is just a solid card that could maybe fit, in, fit into like a variety of rogue decks, honestly. Obviously, you don't want to play this in something where you're just playing a load of really cheap things. So, like, uh, like Quest Rogue, you're probably not going to want to play this because you, your whole deck is just really small things. Um, but any kind of mid-rangey, temporary Rogue deck, I think this could be good in. Right. Hakkar the Soul Flayer. 10 mana, 9, 6. <clears throat> Death Rattle, shuffle a Corrupted Blood into each player's deck. Now, this is one of the wackiest cards of the new expansions. So, what Corrupted Blood does is... Uh, when you draw it, it deals three damage uh, to, to your face, and it then shuffles two more of that card into your deck. So, say uh, Hakkar dies, Corrupted Blood goes into both players' deck, your opponent draws one straight away, they take three damage, and then two more get shuffled into their deck. So they become twice as likely to draw it again, and then obviously once they've drawn all of them, um, well, the more they draw, the more damage they're going to take, and then they could get kind of screwed. So, you're probably going to want to play... If you di could try and find a place for this, it'd be maybe in something that plays, like, naturalizes, because you're going to have them in your deck as well. So you don't want to be, like, drawing loads of your cards, or you're just going to die to the Corrupted Bloods. Like, you, you want your opponent to be drawing all the cards. Um, so things like naturalize would be perfect. Like, I know there's so loads of, like, really strong uh, Druid decks right now, but I'm definitely just going to try a Hakkar Mill Druid just to, <laughs> just to try and kill people with Corrupted Bloods. The, the downside is it's 10 mana. So you can't, like, hack art and naturalize it unless you're, like, using it with using it with Innovate. Uh, or maybe you have the Twig equipped or something. Yeah, this, we can have a lot of fun with this card. We can have a lot of this fun with this card. There will definitely be times you get screwed over, though, and just draw them yourself and die. The main issue is it's 10 mana. Like, the 10 mana is a big downside. But I really like the idea of, like, when they draw it, it's like, they get more of them. And then more and more. And it keeps getting more Corrupted Bloods in their, in their decks. Every time they draw one, they're even more likely to draw one the next time. It's... It's exciting. I just thought, could this work with um, Seeping Oozling, the, the Hunter card? Six mana, five, four, four, copy a Death Rattle of a minion in your deck. You could maybe use this with that. And then you get six mana, Hakkar Death Rattle. Hunter doesn't draw many cards anyway. Just a thought. Zandalari Templar, four mana, four, four, rare Paladin card. Battlecry, if you restore ten health this game, gain plus four, plus four, and taunt. Um, obviously an 8-8 eight, eight taunt is, for 4 mana, is very, very strong. But you have to have restored 4 health, which, I mean, 10, 10 health, which is not that easy. Especially by 10 for turn 4. Like, it's very hard to have restored 10, 10 health by turn 4. So this is going to be like a late game 4 drop. Kind of like Hooked Reaver. Um, you'll probably, you'll be playing this in some, some kind of control paladin deck. Um, there is a new paladin legendary, which I haven't actually spoke about yet. But what it does is it get, replaces your health with armor. So if you've got 30 health... Uh, it puts you down to one health and gives you, like, 29 armor. So that is a way you can gain loads of health uh, and, and actually make the most of lifesteal when normally my lifesteal isn't very good when you've got full health anyway. So, yeah, in the Control Paladin deck, this could be really big. Whether Control Paladin will be good or not, it, it's really hard to say. There's a lot of combo decks around at the moment, so mm, it's hard to believe it will. Warmaster Voon, the Warrior Legendary. Battlecry, copy all dragons in your hands. So this is more dragon synergy for Warrior, and... I would really, really, really like, uh, uh, well, I basically just, re this is actually the most excited I think I've been in a while to play Warrior. Like, I, I, I said earlier, I didn't really like Warrior that much. Um, but Dragon Warrior is exciting, especially when you can have really big value cards like this, where you can get, like, two Yuseras, two Death Rings. Okay, you're not going to want to get two Death Rings, because you just got one anyway. But you get the point. Yeah, <laughs> you can get a lot of value out of, out of just this one little guy. And playing big dragons is fun. And he's a 4 4 3 which, you know, isn't great, isn't great stats, but... It's not, it's not the end of the world. I'm excited about War Master Voon. Fire Tree Witch Doctor. Uh, it's more dragon synergy. 2 mana, 2, 2 rare. Battle cry if you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. So it's similar to his, uh, Nether's Plight Historian, and it's a, a cheap neutral minion that um, has a battle cry if you're holding a dragon. Uh, one thing about Nether's Plight Historian, though, is that you would then be able to discover a dragon, and then that dragon activates all the other dragons that you have in your hand. So things like uh, Duskbreaker. This this uh, Nether's Plight Historian was really good good with because you'd have Dustbreaker in your hand, it'd activate the, the, the Historian, and then if you didn't have another, drag, another dragon, the Historian would find another dragon to then activate the Dustbreaker. Um, this doesn't do that. Um, however, dragons discovering a dragon wasn't that great sometimes because they're just minions. 
Um, discovering a spell, you have options of quite a lot of like reactive tools and are going to be really good in a control deck. So if you're playing Dragon Warrior, you're going to play this card. Um, if you're playing Dragon Priest, you're probably going to play this card. Um, I think Priest and Warrior are probably the two classes that are most likely to potentially see this card. But it's obviously a good card. 2-mana two 2-2 two, two with a, a nice upside. This is, this is good. Revenge of the Wild. It's a 2-mana Hunter spell. It's a rare summon your beasts that died this turn. Now, this card has crazy potential. Um, with things like Flogs, Boom, Zooka, you can play 8 mana, pull 3 beasts out of your deck, they trade into stuff, die, then bam, Revenge of the Wild, get them all back again. Or even simple things in the mid, mid game, like trade your high main off, and then play the Revenge, Revenge of the Wild, get, your, get a 2 mana high main back. The potential of stuff you can do with this card is huge. The issue I have with this card is that a lot of the time when you're trading, you want to trade to keep things alive rather than trade things to die. I feel like often you're going to be wanting to make kind of bad trades just to get value out of this card. And also, you don't want to like... I don't know, like if you're playing like against a control deck, for example, they're the one removing your, your minions. If you're the one removing your minions and you're making all the trades, you can get really good value out of this. But if your opponent's just reacting to your stuff and you don't actually get to kill anything of yours on your own turn, then this could just be a dead card. So... Although the upside of this card is really huge and the potential is massive, there's also, um, yeah, going to be situations where it's actually hard to get value out of. Amani Warbear. 7 mana, 5 7, Rush Taunt. Great card in Arena. I mean, it's a big Rush minion. It's a beast. It's not really much else to say about it, right? It really kind of speaks for itself. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Lick him. It's a 2 mana Shaman weapon, has plus 2 attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. Now, I love Overload Shaman, but right now it's not very good. This weapon, however, is very good. Uh, 2 mana 1, 3 isn't great, but 2 mana 3, 3 is a fantastic weapon. And it's not that hard to overload yourself. Like, you can play um, Lightning Storm, Zaps, Volcanoes. There's a lot of good overload cards right now. You know, could help you play this card in a, in a Shaman deck. Obviously, the most popular Shaman right now is probably Shudderwalk Shaman. Um, are you going to play this in Shudderwalk Shaman? I feel like you probably wouldn't. Even Shaman you could play this in. There's also not that much overload in that. You could play Zap. But the, the the potential of this card is good. Like, the card itself is good. You just have to make sure you're playing enough overload cards to actually get value out of it. Because if you, if you can get value out of it, it's like a it's like a better fiery, better pre-nerf Fiery Warx. Okay, this is the Paladin Legendary I was talking about. High Priest Decal, 3 mana, 3, 4, Battle Cry, Convert all but one of your heroes health into armor so this is a way of potentially getting value out of lifesteal like paladin has so many good healing cards a lot of good lifesteal cards as well but lifesteal is just useless because you're just on full health too much of the time this is a way of making all these healing cards all these lifesteal cards actually useful like you're getting the healing and you know you're actually getting value out of the healing for once and it's gonna help activate this guy the zandalari temp zandalari templar so this I really love like the, the design of this legendary and what it's kind of like allowing you to do like there's just so many cards that Paladin doesn't play just because healing isn't good enough and it could finally make these cards maybe playable. Walk the plank. There's also the side of like you can get up to tw you can get 29 armor with this and then heal back up to full health and be on like 59 health and Paladin which you didn't really get to do. Walk the plank. Form a rogue spell destroy an undamaged minion. Um, it's like assassinate but one cheaper. Obviously you can only do that on undamaged things. I mean. The, the thing with this is that Valspine Slayer is so much better. Like, why would I play this card when I could play Valspine Slayer? You know, would be the one question. I guess if you were, if you wanted to play a deck where you're not playing many minions, so if you're trying to make the shark work with uh, with the darkness, then maybe you could play Walk the Plank instead of instead of Valspine. But in most rogue decks, Valspine is just going to be better. I think. Rabble Bouncer, <clears throat> a seven mana two seven taunt costs one less for each enemy minion. Another one that could be d decent in arena. Obviously, if you opponent has a full board it's a zero runner two seven taunt which is absolutely insane but it's only going to be good against very specific decks it's also got two health so it dies to like kodo and mossy horror and gets stolen by cabal shadow priest dies to shadow of pain but the only reason you'd ever play this in your deck is to you know beat token decks the thing that it, it's like a it's like spreading plague like it's like the it's better the bigger your opponent's board is but it's just way worse than spreading plague so i don't like this card just for that reason <laughs> soup vendor 2 minute 1 4. Whenever you restore 3 or more health to your hero, draw a card. So, this is another card that could work in the whole, like, Paladin type stuff. Like, get some lifesteal, draw a card. Um, there's also priest spells that heal your hero, draw a card. It's got high health, so it's good with things like Powered Shield, and you can, like, heal it up with Circular Healing. 
Um, obviously, Warlock Zoo plays a lot of healing things in right now. Um, but that plays Kelleseth, so you wouldn't really be able to fit this in. But it's a nice card, because if you're playing a lot of healing cards, then... Like, card draw is really valuable. And, and it's got full health. It's not like it's got terrible stats. I feel like this will probably find some place. I feel like this will find a place somewhere. Like, it, it's just a good card. I can't think exact. I don't know exactly what deck it'll be in. Maybe some Warlock or Priest deck or, or Paladin deck. But it's just, like, the potential is just good. That I, I think it will... I think we'll see this card somewhere. Okay, final card of this video. Blast Wave. It's a 5 mana epic mage spell. Deals 2 damage to all minions. Overkill, add a random mage spell to your hand. Um, now, 5 mana deal 2 damage to all minions is not particularly exciting. Adding a random mage spell to your hand for every minion you kill. I mean, it's only going to be 1 health minions that you're actually adding a random mage spell for. There's not that many decks that are just play a load of 1 health minions. So it's actually going to be hard to get the random spells out of it. Yeah, I don't know why you would play this card in your deck. Yeah, I mean, this is just not really as good as the other um, mage AoEs. Like, you got Blizzard, Dragon's Fury, Flame Strike. It's just not as good. Like, maybe you just play this in Control Mage just as an extra AoE. And the obviously, the random mage spells can be... Can, could potentially be beneficial. There's a lot of really good mage spells. Like, we might play this as a big spell mage, honestly. We, we just might. Just as an extra AoE. It's obviously going to be worse than all our other AoEs. But it might just be worth it just because... Just so we can have a deck of, like... Board clear, board clear, board clear, board clear. And sometimes from this, you'll add some random spells. Obviously, if, you get, if you're against Odd Paladin, you can clear, like, potentially, like, a bunch of 1-1s and add a load of random mage spells to your hand and get a load of value out of it. So there is, you know, potential to get really high value. But, yeah, it's just not as good as the other mage AoEs. Right. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Looking forward to the next one. Talking about some more cards. Catch you guys later.